In today's video, we're going to examine the history behind the beautiful and powerful Alaskan Malamute. Welcome back to the Fenrir Malamute Show. My name is Rachel and I'm the co-founder here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Malamute, then how to become high-level canine leaders that can raise perfect canine companions. So if you're a lifelong Malamute lover, thinking about getting one or just starting your journey with your new Malamute, then this channel is for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you never miss a future upload. So let's dive straight in and find out how this gorgeous, affectionate breed came to be. The Alaskan Malamute takes its name from the Malamute, a nomadic Inuit tribe that lived in northwestern Alaska and originally bred these dogs. In such a cold, hostile environment, the tribe and their dogs depended on each other for survival, leading to an incredibly close bond. The Malamutes were regarded incredibly highly and thought of as family within the tribe. They would share in the tribe's food resources even when supplies were running low. The Malamute had a great deal of utility and were truly essential to the survival of their people. They were originally bred to be long distance sledge dogs and unlike the, the Husky which was developed for transporting small loads at speed, the Malamute was relied on for strength and endurance. They were capable of pulling incredibly heavy loads over vast distances in treacherous and freezing conditions, allowing the tribe to continuously travel throughout the region with all of their supplies. In addition to their freighting abilities, they were also used for hunting big games such as seals and reindeer, as well as fending off polar bears and guarding the tribe from danger. It's even believed that due to their thick coats and high body temperature, people would tuck their babies in between the dogs to keep them warm in the coldest conditions. When gold was discovered in Alaska in 1896, the Klondike Gold Rush began. The region was suddenly inundated with prospecting migrants hunting for gold and hoping to make their fortune. There was therefore a massive demand for Malamutes to haul cargo on these expeditions, and many were brought and subsequently crossbred with other dogs. This almost led to the disappearance of the Alaskan Malamute entirely. However, most of these crossbreeds were simply not as well adapted to life in such an extreme environment. They were much less resilient than the Malamute and also needed more food to survive, meaning that eventually they died out and only the purebred Malamutes remained. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. I wanted just to quickly let you know, if you're interested in watching more videos about me actually working with dogs, following the cases of the behavior modification programs and the different training programs that I implement, as well as me training and raising my own dogs, then we've got a dedicated channel to that exact thing. It's called Fenrir Canine Training. There's tons of videos on there and there's multiple new videos of me working with dogs and some of our Fenrir certified trainers working with dogs to give you incredible levels of value and to help you have perfect canine companions just like these guys here so there'll be a link in the description box below I can't wait to see you over on that channel. In the 1930s Arthur T Walden established a kennel in New Hampshire to breed Alaskan Malamutes and to rebuild the population. The kennel supplied many dogs for Antarctic expeditions and also began a program designed to reproduce the original Malamutes found in Alaska as closely as possible. These dogs that originated from Walden's kennel became known as the Kudsetbu strain of Alaskan Malamutes. Another strain was developed by a man named Paul Volker Sr., who bred dogs he purchased in Alaska to produce the Emlute strain. Dogs from this strain were utilised in World War I to deliver supplies to isolated troops stationed in France mountain outposts. They were then used again in World War II as search and rescue dogs, as well as to sniff out mines and haul weapons. The Alaskan Malamute was recognised by the American Kennel Club in 1935 and is believed to be one of the oldest dog breeds whose original looks and characteristics remain almost un completely unchanged. They can weigh up to 43 kilograms and usually measure between 55 and 66 centimetres. Because the Malamute is a pack orientated animal, establishing firm, consistent leadership is vital to developing a trusting bond and avoiding behavioural problems. These incredible dogs have proved to be diligent and loyal allies to mankind throughout history in all sorts of different roles. And today they remain gentle giants treasured for their companionship, intelligence and sweet nature. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and learned something new. 
If so, make sure you hit that like button, get involved down in the comments section below, and don't forget that if you're new here to make sure that you subscribe. We have two dedicated Malamute videos coming here every week, so I can't wait to talk to you again soon on the next episode of the Fenrir Malamute Show.